Hey guys, so I'm Kedar here from Plugin India at uh, EV Summit uh, in Delhi. And I have here with me Mr. Manoj Khurana from Invest India. So hello, Mr. Manoj, it's nice to uh, have you here and thanks for agreeing to talk to us. Thanks Kedar, thanks for having me here. Uh, so just I'll briefly introduce uh, myself and Plugin India. So Plugin India originally just started uh, you know, as a blog by uh, Kamlesh who is our founder and then uh, it blossomed into a great community and then it also you know, to make it sustainable we made it a business. We have a very thriving community, we have user groups, we have a um, YouTube channel and we do consultancy for companies and we, our mission is to accelerate electric mobility in India. And uh, you know, in just in last year or so, we have seen huge interest. Like people are asking a lot more questions. People were not taking electric vehicles seriously, but suddenly they are now. So, which is great. Um, yeah, we are very much excited uh, to be part of this electric vehicle revolution. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your background and uh, Invest India and the work you are doing? Sure. Uh very good to know about what plugin is doing probably offline we'll catch up and i'll try to understand more uh, invest india is a national investment promotion and facilitation agency of the government of india it is set up within the department of industrial policy and promotion ministry of commerce and industries we also have fiki nascom cii and few state governments as our stakeholders we have been created f for the investors by the government so our job really is to help investors in evaluating india uh, in investing in India and operating in India. We are officially the execution arm for the Make in India program as well. Um, the way we organize, we have country teams which look at investor relationships with foreign countries and facilitate investments from there. We have sector teams and that's where I come in. I lead electric mobility sector. And as you said, your mission is to propagate EVs uh, awareness as well as adoption. Mm -hmm. I can say our mission is to propagate manufacturing-led adoption of EVs, right? We want that as we go and uh, embark on this journey of clean transportation, the products we make are actually made bottom-up in India, right? So with that context, we're doing a lot of work in policy advocacy, in uh, cross-border partnerships, mm -hmm. and also the usual facilitation. So we are working with few companies as well across the value chain. I see, okay. So uh, just just so that uh, to get it a little more clear, um, you uh, are like a bridge between investors and the government. Is, is that Definitely. what it is? Yes. Okay. So you kind of maybe uh, talk to investors, get their interest, and go and advise government on policy, mm -hmm. and then maybe talk to government and get sort of you know idea which sector we want more interested in, and try to connect with investors. I can I can give you say live examples. Uh -huh. So on policy side, as you know that a lot of policy discussions are happening, right? And we have to cover the entire ecosystem. Uh, it's about manufacturing policy, it's about fame, which is adoption policy, it's also about the infrastructure or charging policy, right? right? Since we talk to a lot of foreign investors uh -huh. who come from, say, countries like Japan, US, Korea, China, which are, say, much ahead in terms of their adoption, in terms of their understanding of the ecosystem, we get a lot of high quality inputs which can go to our policy formulation. So we sort of collate those inputs, apply our insight and apply our analytics to it and submit them to the corresponding uh, department in a form which is consumable for them. Okay. So, it's so that it's not too technical, it, it is something which they can actually digest and work on. Right. So we have given inputs on FAME 2 which is still being considered. Uh, we are giving inputs to Niti Aayog on a wide variety of things. So that is one part. The second part is on actually helping companies. Mm -hmm. So we have interest from companies across the ecosystem. We have a lot of com interest from cell manufacturing companies who want who are looking at India aggressively. Right. We have interest from OEMs, which is which is obvious. We have interest from companies who want to do power electronics, motors. So across mm -hmm. the ecosystem. So I can give you an example of a cell company. How how are we helping them? So it started with we telling them what's happening in, in this country in terms of okay how is the policy changing gst is low we have a fame scheme you can set up charging stations so give them some flavor of how the policy is evolving yeah. then um, they also do their own due diligence and they probably arrived at okay we we want to figure out if we have to set up a plan where should it be right so we jointly work together we identified six states for them okay these states considering your uh, requirements of land uh, requirements of infrastructure, port, uh, any other logistics, these are the states which sort of fit your bill. Okay. 
So then we introduced them to all those six state governments. We went around with them, met all those state governments. Uh -huh. They talked about their proposals. The state government talked about what the state could offer right. in terms of when they set up, what kind of state programs they can leverage. Right. So it's actually taking them from a country to a state, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And then you cover all the elements of the relationship with the country, then helping them understand the sector policy, and then you take them to a state level. So we cover the entire cycle. I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Great, great. And, and you know, now coming back to like the EV specific uh, area, uh, what we are seeing a lot in India is that, uh, uh, I mean, we are seeing products, companies are coming, especially two wheeler, product, two -wheeler products, a lot of companies are coming in, four wheeler products, big ones, Tata and Mahindra are coming and hopefully other will, others will also join. Uh, where are we as far as uh, in businesses and investment in making the components here and right? mm. uh, by components I mean like the, uh, the, the motors, the BLDC motors or all other motors as well and the battery cells and you know like these basic uh, components. Mm. Uh, is there a lot of investor interest? Is there a lot of policy support for that? Um, I think for electronics there's a very clear policy support. There's a scheme called MSIPS Modified Special Incentives uh, Program okay. which gives you a lot of capital subsidy and there's some revenue subsidy as well when you set up electronics manufacturing in India. The scheme has been going on for a while. Okay. It was largely um, focused on other electronic components including cell phone as well. So there is, there is a program. Okay. I think production or manufacturing usually follows demand mm -hmm. and demand in this particular case has to come from OEMs. Right. Unless, so I'm a tier 1 supplier, right? right? Let's say the value chain is an OEM, there's a tier 1 supplier, there's a tier 2 supplier. Mm -hmm. Tier 2 suppliers work for tier 1 suppliers, tier 1 suppliers work for OEMs. So unless OEMs give some substantial demand which is economically viable for people to set up plants, there will be some tendency to adopt uh, products from abroad mm -hmm. and then assemble them in India. But I think as, you, as we go forward that will have to change because the conditions are, here are different. You know, we keep talking about um, how we have higher temperatures, you know, that needs different thermal management for batteries. Okay. How our road conditions are that we drive very slow, that needs a different motor configuration, right? So to begin with, it could happen that we'll have to probably adopt from other markets, but I think in long term, considering our history as well, we are a very indigenized uh, ecosystem. Yeah. Most of our car products, the components are made in India already. But I think in long term, and also it makes sense for, for an auto supply chain, you want a lean, fast supply chain, right? Yeah. So long term, I see that will happen, but in short term, there could be some uh, dependence on imports. Okay, okay. Just uh, last week or so, I, I remember I was reading this uh, big uh, news headline that SoftBank is going to invest like 100 billion in solar, solar or something yes. like huge amounts. Yeah. So it looks like there is a huge interest in alternative energy. Yes. Is there like also, you, you see there is enough attraction and enough interest even for this electric vehicle specific investments? I think there's a lot of interest, just that the timelines are slightly different. Solar has been going on in India since around 11, 2010. It is, now we have 20, I think 20 gigawatt of solar, fairly substantial. Last year we added, I think, 9 gigawatts. So, solar has matured in terms of people talking about such big investments. Electric vehicles will get there, and the investments in transportation are going to be way more, you know. Uh, they'll be much larger, I would say. It's going to be the, only the battery market in India is supposed to be $300 billion. If we had, if hypothetically wow. we transition uh, from current fleet to EVs by 2030, it's just a hypothetical transition, we need $300 billion of battery. So, and then you have the other components as well. So it's going to be a huge, but it's a, we have to look at a bigger time scale. Even countries like UK, they're talking about 2040, yeah. right? France is talking about 2040. Right. So we have to have a longer horizon, be a little more patient. Yeah. And I think then we'll see investments as well as a uh, few more products on the streets. And, and you know, as far as businesses wise, oftentimes on our forums and uh, uh, when we talk to users, uh, there is always this uh, thing that people are willing to come and set up here businesses that are more related to uh, assembly and, and uh, the core engineering and product development businesses, uh, they are, people are still, uh, uh, we are not seeing as much interest. So mm -hmm. from where you are sitting and from your knowledge, uh, do you think companies are uh, planning or coming here even for those that type of businesses or uh, or is our perception correct that there is not that much happening what do you think i think if you look at it a lot of companies uh, if we leave ev aside for a bit a lot of companies have set up their r and d uh, centers in india mm -hmm. texas instruments has like like their second biggest center in bangalore for example right um, maruti is investing a lot in r and d in india i think 
R and D investments are happening, but if we come down to EV now, we are in a different stage right now. See, the R and D in EVs is mostly about cell chemistry, mm-hmm. developing new types of motors, mm-hmm. and power, like motor controllers, which is mm-hmm. which comes under power electronics. So I have seen a lot of startups do a lot of work in power electronics, motor controller level. Okay. Uh, companies doing a lot of battery packaging assembly. Again, startups, bigger companies as well, and a lot of work being done even on BLDC motors. Like there's a new trend in India today about so BLDC motors are more efficient. Right. So there's a lot of work being done on not just EV but using those motors, say in fans. Mm-hmm. So Tata Power is running a program with a startup called Atomberg, and I have those two fans. Yeah, <laughs> yes, right. And I met a friend yesterday who was st- starting a similar startup. Right. right. I think a lot of work is happening, but what where we sort of miss is. fundamental research you know developing engineering is still happening to a point but the fundamental the r part of it is is sort of missing and it's not ev specific it's it's a i would say a larger goal we should have as a country that we want to do more of fundamental research and also take that research to market you know, i think these are the two things do more research develop a tech to market program i think these these two things are something we need to be done over long term across sectors i think that's a very good point yeah. the fundamental research is is often times you know i i, I don't think there is enough trust uh, yeah. on in in india for that uh, i think there is trust whatever little i've understood just that it, it it's we have to figure out you know how how do we make it more productive mm-hmm. probably i think there is enough investment going into r&d in india mm-hmm. uh, if you actually compare there is more government investment in r&d than private investment in r&d which is opposite of most developed countries mm-hmm. um countries like israel us china um which do a lot of i mean the metric is r&d spend as percent of gdp these countries rule the roost there the the r&d spend is driven by private corporations here it is opposite so we need we when we solve for that problem we also have to figure out how do we get private corporation to spend more on r&d because then if you don't invest in r&d you will have to do partnerships which is fine but again you are not doing new right. fundamental right. research right. and and uh, you know uh, one thing that is often is in discussion right now is the the target uh, announced by government of uh, india or uh, to completely go electric by 2030 so i mean is is that target official and is the policy being guided by that target or you know where do we stand on that date i think uh, 2030 is not an official target okay. it was also clarified in uh, the parliament by minister of heavy industries ah, okay. that there is no Uh, official target per se. I see. Uh, we need to have a notional target probably uh-huh. to anchor us somewhere. It may not be 2030. See, the the larger point is EV is happening. Right. Whether it happens in 2030, which is too early, because as I said, UK is looking at 2040, France is looking to 2040, and they are slightly ahead of us. Right. So I think that the time scales have to be extended. Uh-huh. But transition has to happen. uh it will probably see it is there is a merit in putting a date only when you can create a regulatory framework around it otherwise what is the point yeah. right so at this stage we have not maybe if we tomorrow if you if you want to put a date to it then we'll have a regulatory framework along with it i see yeah great uh, so from where you are right now what do you think can be done or what needs to happen to accelerate uh, may not be a particular date but just to accelerate the shift towards electric mobility I know this is a very general question, but no, you know, maybe just talk two things that come to your mind. I think we have to find ways to create demand, mm-hmm. uh, which will. Where I think your role also comes in. Consumers have to start asking for EVs, <laughs> right? So a lot of consumer awareness on why these are better products, mm-hmm. uh, why they make sense even on economic side. If you look at DCO for certain applications. Mm-hmm. so that there is pressure on OEMs or whoever is or even startups for example to start launching products. the other is uh, i would say on 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 um, manufacturing side i think we need to have a slightly longer term strategy that how do we want to play this again we are early days so we can take our times but we need to figure out how do we set up supply chains in india uh, what will our duty structures look like over time mm-hmm. what kind of r and d support can we give right okay. can government do something about demand creation esl is doing uh, for government right they are right but can we change that program slightly that we have a long term view on that mm-hmm. can private agencies do something like this can esl do something like that for private players who want to adopt evs right. um can we convince foreigners foreign companies to start assembling 
soon like mm. so if you look at the uh, you can import at a lower rate and start assembling so there's a lot of things it's you know ev the thing with ev is it needs a lot of things to come together right. that's that's the so it may take take time for things to come together but when it once it comes together we'll see accelerated growth till that time probably it will be in pockets people trying different things right, right. great great thank you so much mr